overwork in Japan is a real problem and a deadly one at that. There is even a Japanese word for it, karoshi, meaning death from overwork. It's a problem that affects Japan's teachers in particular. They are expected to not just teach their students, but also lead them during after-school activities, cleaning duties and mentoring. One investigation found school teachers working an average of 123 hours overtime each month, well above the government-defined karoshi line of 80 hours, essentially meaning a high risk of death from overwork if one works more than 80 overtime hours a month. For some teachers, though, that risk does turn real. A brain hemorrhage killed middle school teacher Yoshio Kudo in 2007 at just 40 years of age. His diary entries told of a punishing workday that started early and could last until nearly midnight. Teachers are particularly vulnerable to karoshi. A decades-old law essentially prevents them from being paid for overtime. His widow, a former teacher herself, says attitudes to karoshi need to change. For about a year before he passed away, he would often say how tired he was and how bad a headache he had. From when he moved to the new school in April until he died two months later, he kept saying he was exhausted. He said he wanted to leave the school. Death from overwork kills Japan's overstretched workers with heart attacks, strokes from mental stress, malnourishment, and some workers even take their own lives. A survey by the OECD found Japanese middle school teachers work 56 hours a week, compared to an average 38 hours in most developed countries. That doesn't account for the massive overtime hours spent cleaning, supervising school commutes to after-school clubs, and other tasks. I have things to do outside school, too, including family responsibilities. So I sometimes get snowed under and feel pressured time-wise. But even when I am under pressure, I don't reduce my workload at school. I enjoy the time I spend playing with the kids, and I just cannot stop. An investigation by a union-affiliated think tank showed school teachers work an average 123 hours of overtime each month, pushing their weekly workload well beyond the dangerous 80-hour threshold, which labor experts call the karoshi line. Teaching is often seen as a sacred job devoted to children, but there are growing calls in Japan for teachers to stop pushing beyond their limits. And joining me now for more context from Tokyo is Hiroshi Ono. He's a professor of human resources management at the Hitotsubashi University in the capital of Japan. His research includes Japan's work culture. Professor Ono, welcome. Overwork in Japan has been widely reported on, but I'd just like to narrow down to teachers first. Why are they in particular expected to work long hours and weekends? Well, uh, teachers, uh, the, t the, the profession of teachers um, is very typical of uh, the Japanese um, work culture in, in a sense that job functions are very ambiguous. Um, they have many responsibilities outside their main work, which is teaching. Um, <clears throat> and also, I mean, there's like a, like a lot of paperwork and administration involved in a Japanese school system. And uh, the other reason, of, I would say, is that digital transformation has been very, very slow to take off in Japan. So, you know, teachers are having to deal with a lot of paperwork, a lot of administration outside of, of, of their schoolwork. And also, like, if you talk about many responsibilities, they are also expected to, like, for example, um, run clubs and sports activities, right? Right. So, they might have to coach uh, athletics. Uh, they might have to lead a book club or a reading club. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these activities actually take place on weekends, right? Which right. takes a lot of time away from their, their leisure time. 
But then in all of this, surely people must understand, banned by people, I mean parents or administrators, must understand that this is human beings that we are talking about and we are asking these human beings to be involved and, in a sense, overcommitted and uh, that this must come at significant health costs which, in turn, can't be beneficial for children. That is a very, you know, reasonable understanding. And uh, but I guess that the, the profession of teacher has always been kind of um, uh, as an admirable uh, profession here. That teachers are expected to be like, you know, secondary parents almost, so that uh, you know they, the the parents come to to rely on them very much. Um, and so that the parents would have a peace of mind that their, their kids are doing well in school. And so I think that teachers have a sense of responsibility that they, you know, they need to really look after the well-being of their uh, the kids. And they, um, you know, as, as also, also often the true in, in Japan is that they can't say no. You know, it's a, there's, it's a culture where it's very difficult to say no to these responsibilities once, once they're asked. Mm -hmm. So I think overall, there's like a, a compared to like European cultures, the distinction between, you know, work and non-work is very, very blurred. Um, and as you point out, I think that we need we need to respect the boundaries of the, the people's, um, especially teachers, uh, separation between work and non-work. You essentially describe the difference uh, between European and Japanese culture in many ways. And I'm just trying to understand where this culture comes from essentially the overall question of why is working long hours the norm in Japan? Well, I worked in Sweden for eight years in my life. Um, and what I, what I learned from that experience is that, you know, Swedes or perhaps Europeans in general have a very healthy uh, respect for um, the separation between work and leisure. So I think Europeans prioritize leisure and then they kind of work backwards to see how much they have to work, right? Mm -hmm. Japan is almost the opposite where uh, work is very defining of one's identity. So what one does to for, for work or, you know, where one is employed is a big part of that person's identity. So work is a very, very high priority. And then whatever is left after work is allocated to leisure, right? So. Um, I think that is a very, very big difference. Um, you might see some statistics, not just about working hours, but also like uh, people taking holidays in Japan is very, very low. I mean, there, we have many, many holidays, national holidays, um, company designated holidays, but the, um, the uptake of uh, holidays in Japan still remains very low. And a lot of that is leading to this phenomenon of death from overwork or karoshi, uh, as has been known about since at least the 1970s, at least that's when the term came into being. I mean, that's a pretty long time, sir. Why has it been so hard for employers to address this and change things? Well, first of all, I should uh, clarify that, you know, the karoshi is a word that was invented by Japan. Um, and there is this thing called the karoshi line, which is uh, designated as uh, more than 80 hours of overwork in a month. And um, which means that if you're working over 80 hours of overtime in a month, you are at the risk of karoshi, right? So there's this thing called the karoshi line. And by that right. definition, uh, if you look at like the OECD statistics, a lot of companies, uh, I mean, a lot of countries you know, there are actually a lot of people that are at risk in other countries uh, by this definition. So it's not necessarily unique to Japan. Uh, and what is unique to Japan is that Japanese government, to the best of my knowledge, is the only country which collects data of Koroshi, right? So, um, <clears throat> and that's kind of like had this unfortunate distinction that Japan is a, a country where people die from overwork. Well, having said that, the Karoshi statistics basically show that, uh, it's, you're right, I mean, the world has been long for a, a, a long time. And <clears throat> especially, uh, I think in the 2000s, uh, it started to go up again. Um, and 
and it's it's on a decline in more recent uh, years. One of the reasons that it's come to um, get some attention or unwanted attention mm -hmm. uh, is that Karoshi uh, is starting to there were there were some incidences of Karoshi among big companies, right? right. Like big uh, companies listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, and so it was no longer like. <clears throat> A problem that was, uh, you know, left to the like the small and medium sized uh, companies or, or companies right. on the fringe, it was actually taking over into the big companies, and this got the attention of the ministries, right? So, the response to that has been uh, quite uh, strong, and the Ministry of Health and Labor and Welfare are very concerned about the Karoshi problem. And mm -hmm. they have started a list of what's black companies, right? Black companies are companies that have um, extremely poor working conditions, uh, long working hours being one of them. And so there has been a, a big movement towards uh, taking on this problem of karoshi and long working hours. Do you think, briefly, sir, are you optimistic that Japan can change its work culture and curb deaths from overwork? Well, it's, um, it is going in the right direction. Uh, as I said, the government is taking serious action um, about uh, taking on this problem. Uh, it is uh, considered to be um, a health issue. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, like there's a more, uh, a, a higher awareness of mental health issues uh, in this country as a result of it. Uh, so, like, if you need help, please reach out. Um, and so, uh, the the culture, at least the karoshi part, I think, uh, should be corrected. The long working hour culture might remain. Right. Well, we'll leave it there for the time being. But uh, very interesting talking to you, and thanks so much for that context, Professor Hiroshi Ono. Ono, thank you so much for joining us, sir.